Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning is confirmation and Palm Sunday at the same time, a, a juxtaposition of two very important aspects of, of church life. Two very important parts of our journey, you might say, as Christians. The Lenten journey that, that concludes with Holy Week and our journey as, as Christians from our baptism to the day that we confess our faith publicly and boldly before the church and pledge our faithfulness as, as members of, of that church, members of our Lord's body, members of our Lord's army, you might say. And of course, any journey always comes with a certain amount of complication. Maybe if nothing else for parents sometimes, just taking a journey with your family, with your kiddos, deals with the complication of having to deal with all that comes with your kids being stuck in the back seat with one another for a while, right? The constant refrain, if nothing else, of are we there yet? Are we there yet? All the friction, all the frustration, all the fights that occur. I remember when we lived in Houston, you know, our, our kids were very young, and of course, our grandparents were far away. Pam's parents were a four-hour drive, and you get the kids in the car, it didn't matter how many books, how many games, how many movies you had to distract them. No sooner had we even hit the Houston city limits on our way out of town than you started hearing that. Are we there yet, right? Time had no concept for these kids. All they wanted was to get to Gigi and Papa's house. All they wanted to do was play in Grandma and Grandpa's backyard. They just wanted the journey to be over. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Now, you know, for most of us, that refrain, that chorus, isn't something we may hear for a little while. If you're parents of small children, even older children sometimes. Spring breaks behind us. Summer vacation is still a little ways off, and so... There won't be too many road trips for a little while, but even still, that anthem, that chorus is one that plays in the back of our minds, I think subconsciously maybe you might say, as we go through life. I mean, as I said, life is a journey. How often and how easy it is for us to define life, sum it up as, as simply that, a constant awaiting for the next thing, looking forward to that next destination on the path, on the journey. How often do we hear ourselves saying, are we there yet? When you're kids, it's, you're in school and you're waiting for that next vacation. You're waiting for summer vacation. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? But then summer vacation comes and no sooner does July roll around and you're already wondering, anticipating what the next grade's going to be like. Who's going to be your new teacher? Are we there yet? You play sports and you wonder if you're going to win the next game or if your team's going to go to playoffs or to district or on to state. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And before you know it, middle school and, and junior high roll right by and you're anticipating and looking forward to high school. And in a few years after that, college, are we there yet? Having to ask lots of big questions. Will I find the career of my dreams? Will I find that person who's right for me and will eventually become my husband or wife? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Will I be able to realize my dream of having a family? Are we there yet? Will I meet the goals that I set for my life, for my career? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Will I handle each new change and challenge that comes along in life, each struggle, that, that comes along each cross that I have to carry. Will I have the strength to go on? Are we there yet? As I grow older, will I handle aging gracefully? Health issues that come along and ultimately even the end of life. Well, how will I approach death? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, if you think about it, we answer those questions, that question a lot all through life arriving at destinations, and then looking for the next one. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And of course, all along the path, our Lord gives us His Word. God's Word, the Bible, which gives us the confidence, the strength, the wisdom, and the hope that we need to endure so that we might walk that path following our Lord. 
Well, obviously, Confirmation Day is one of those milestones along that path. Many of you probably remember your own Confirmation Day well. Today, we get to rejoice with our confirmands. They've worked hard. They've studied hard. Today, they get to become communicant members of our church. They get to take Holy Communion for the very first time, and they get to make a promise that they will be faithful even unto death and only by the grace of God. But you know, a confirmation service, well, it's for us, all of us as a church, nothing but a reminder. It's a reminder of the fact that life is a journey, a journey that our Lord seeks to prepare us for, that we are called to prepare ourselves for. And as God's people, we know where that journey ends. You know, just like any road trip, it's not just random and wondering, right? We know where we're going. We know heaven is our home. We're heading to our Father's house. And so all along the way, we know that our Lord is is preparing us for that journey. Today we get to confirm the fact that in the lives of our seventh graders, at least, that's part of that process that's taken place. We as a church have helped equip them and teach them and train them. He says, many of you who have lived the faith a long time know a lot can happen along a journey. I mean, if nothing else, just the car ride itself sometimes is very important. We need important skills to handle the, the ride. Crammed in the back seat often with our siblings, if you remember when you were young. I remember it well in, in my family's Mercury Sable or on the back bench of my dad's Chevy. My two brothers on, on, in the car with us. And while we had lots of fun, and some of those are the best memories of my life, my childhood, boy, some of them are my worst, you know? It's amazing how many fights and how much trouble you can cause with your siblings crammed in the back seat on a road trip. I'm sure we made that trip sometimes pure hell for our parents and then constantly saying, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And yet it's in that vehicle, on those road trips, crammed on that back seat, that back bench, that we also learned a lot about what it meant to live out the faith. It's there that we learned about making peace. It's there that we learned about giving forgiveness. It's there that we learned about rejoicing and laughing and sharing in special moments with family, with brothers, with siblings. You know, in so many ways, that's exactly what the church is all about, too. As Christians, we're each on a journey. Yes, we know we're headed heavenward, but we're not on that journey alone, right? That God has given us the church, a family, wherein we get to journey together. And it's here in the church that we get to learn a lot of very valuable skills and receive a lot of valuable training to prepare us for that journey. It's here that we get to give and receive forgiveness. It's here that we get to make peace and reconcile It's here that we get to share. It's here that we get to rejoice with others who have milestones and things to celebrate in their life. Right? It's here that we learn that life isn't just all about us, but rather it's about us together. It's about the journey, not just the destination, but how we follow the Lord as we live right where he has placed us in the here and now. You know, yes, our confirmants, they, they make vows, and they're going to pledge to be faithful. But you and I know just how easy it is as soon as we get out those, those doors in this world that we live in for those vows to sometimes get put in the back seat, right? And are the last things we think of as we set our priorities and make our schedules, right? This world just has a way of leading us astray, and this flesh, this sinful flesh doesn't do us any favors either. But how good it is to know that in the church... We nonetheless still have people who care about us. If nothing else, right, these seventh graders, they have a pastor who isn't afraid throughout their life's journey to confront them whenever they make bad choices or get on paths that they shouldn't be on. Who's willing to stand up and and let them know the truth. And, you know, in so many ways, it's not just my job, right? I mean, oftentimes we criticize the church when, when our youth don't come back and aren't in church regularly or people, people you know, don't come to church as often as they should. We say the elders should do something or pastors should do something, but it's all of us. Parents, grandparents, aunts and uncles, Sunday school teachers, us all doing this work together, journeying together, 
holding one another accountable, sharing life together as God's people. You know, we make a lot of journeys and trips in life, a lot of vacations, a lot of road trips. But you know, the one thing I've noticed too that in the 15 years or so that I've had a family, Pam and I have been married. It's funny how it, it, we always said if we live close to family, we'll, we'll make sure we take trips to the grandparents regularly. But, but it's funny, even, even after moving closer to family, how easy it is sometimes for life to get in the way of that too. How suddenly a month can go by and you can realize we haven't even been to the grandparents' house in a while. Everything just seems to move around you so fast, right? And, and everything just gets crowded on the calendar. Well, how often is that exactly the way we often approach our coming home to the family of God, too? You know, one of the things I try to impress upon seventh graders in confirmation is just how important priorities are in the Christian's life. Yeah, we're saved by grace, no doubt about it, but... The Holy Spirit isn't the one that fills in our calendar. He's not the one who wakes us up on Sunday morning. He's not the one who makes sure that on Saturday night we, we get to bed in enough time so that we can make it to church the next day. We do those things. We set those priorities. And just like sometimes living nearby family but never finding the time to actually make it home and, and spend time with the grandparents, so often we neglect our church family. We neglect our Lord's house Boy, when we don't, when we don't come home, it's amazing how empty we can start feeling inside after a while. Right here is where we're nourished. Here is where the food is placed on the table, the food that we really need. It's here that the word of our Father encourages us and fills us up and, and forgives our sins and reminds us of exactly who we are. Makes me think of a family vacation we took when I was a kid to California where we saw some of those giant redwoods and sequoias that are in Sequoia National Park. I don't know if you've ever been there, but it's majestic. It's incredible, these towering giants. They can get up to 300 feet tall and, and more than 60 feet in diameter. But I'll never forget how, for as many trees that you saw standing in that forest, how many you also saw lying down on the ground, fallen giants, wondering, you know, what, what on earth could cause something so big, so massive? to succumb, to, to die, right? These trees that can live thousands of years suddenly toppling and falling. Is it fire? Is it some storm, tornado, or, or, or high winds that, that knock them down? But you know what it is? It's actually a little bug. <laughs> now, these trees, they can withstand incredible forces of wind. They are fire-resistant. Their wood actually does not burn very well at all, but... It is susceptible to a little bug, a little beetle that over centuries can chew away at these trees fiber by fiber before too long, even though they may seem strong on the outside, they become hollow and weak on the inside. And then just a little blaze from a fire or a little breeze can suddenly topple them in a moment. Yeah, I think too often we're like that in the way that we approach life too. Oh, Satan, he, he knows that he can puff us up very good, our pride. He can puff up our ego and make us think that we are strong and that, hey, we're, we're doing all right. We don't need the things of the Lord. We don't need to go home. <laughs> and then suddenly, tragedy strikes. Then suddenly, we're, we're put through a crisis of faith. We're suddenly forced to carry a cross in life, and it can take any form, any trouble, any trial, any grief, and we just fall apart. Any little sin, any little addiction can take hold of us, and we don't even know how to grapple with it. And why? Because, well, we haven't received the things we need to be strong. We haven't been home in a long time to our Father. You know, our Lord Jesus Christ, He goes all the way to the cross to secure salvation for us. Today, we start that. We start Holy Week. We start to put together that picture through our worship services today and Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday, seeing our Lord make his way to the cross. On Good Friday, we will walk through, even journey through the valley of the shadow of death. The shadow of the mountain of the skull will loom large, and there on that mountain, the unthinkable will happen. God Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, will suffer and die for you and me. 
The crowds that once proclaimed and honored Jesus with their palm branches will be the same ones who will stand there and look on as if this is a good thing, a right thing. And there our Lord will bleed. And there our Lord will pour out his very lifeblood so that you and I, sinners that we are blinded so often by our own egos and pride, will receive the very nourishment that we need to be children of God. Yeah, today is a day of rejoicing. We rejoice with our confirmants. We rejoice on Palm Sunday, but it's a weird kind of rejoicing. It's by faith that we know that we belong here, that we belong in this house, that we belong in this place where we pour out our praises even though we're sinners, right? That with the very tongues that we, we so often sin and do the things that defile our Lord's name, it's with those tongues today that nonetheless we sing his praises but we do it because we're his children. We're the ones he has claimed. And like a trip to grandma and grandpa's house then, though this trip may seem familiar, this journey, we do it every year, Holy Week, Palm Sunday, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter. This old, old story really is our salvation. It's the heart of the gospel. Jesus died for you so that you might always come home. It's confirmed, right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> That's what we need. That's what we're here for. That's what we've been prepared for, the journey. So don't stay away. In Jesus' name, amen.